1983, there was a young, brand new rock band. They started putting together a tape, sort of a demo tape, just with their own equipment, casually recorded. They didn't have any resources. They didn't have any money. Fans of this very small satellite niche genre started sharing it. They loved it. There was this growing underground interest of this demo recording that they had done. And they were feeling pretty good about themselves because, you know, when you're starting, nobody's listening and suddenly you get some interest. That feedback means everything. And they were super excited. So that started growing and they got this little underground following. They'd play little gigs and they'd have a little bit more of a turnout. Each week it was getting to be a little bit more. And with that little bit of momentum, they got a record deal. They get signed to a major label. The label's looking for the next new thing. They see this little traction in this little corner and boom, they get a major opportunity to record an album. So they're getting ready. They schedule the recording time in the studio. They're about to do this album and the band gets together and makes the decision and tells the guitarist they don't want him in the band anymore. They kick him out. Like right before their big opportunity to record their first album on this major label, they've got this underground traction behind them and this guitarist is devastated. He did not see this coming at all. They buy him a bus ticket home. They don't even get him on the flight. They buy him a bus ticket home. They don't really have much money, but they do buy him a one-way ticket. So the next day he's on the bus going home. His dreams from a few days earlier, which were ballooning and growing and opportunity was at his doorstep. He's now on a bus home, kicked out of the band, rejected and devastated. I mean, the, the shock from the highs he was experiencing to the devastation of this bus ride, this long bus ride home, he's just crushed. The whole time, this disappointment, this sadness turns to anger. He is now determined to build a band that is better, more successful, and can blow them away. He is on fire with anger and rage. He wants to do a band that's gonna be more intense, more impossible to ignore a band that cannot fail and will explode and will show his former bandmates what he is capable of, what an incredible mistake they made. And so he's planning this on the bus ride home. He gets home, he starts immediately. He starts practicing like a maniac. He is determined to be the greatest guitarist in this genre to make his talent unmissable. He starts searching for the best bandmates in the world. So he is now all out, all in to build this new band that is all that drives them. It is an obsession. He is all out on this. So he puts together this new band with amazing talent. He is practicing so hard, so consistently. It's all he does. It is consuming him and he builds this band. His band is in a very niche genre. He was one of a few bands and few artists that launched this genre and he does it. He succeeds out of the gate. He blows up. He gets a major label deal. His band gets bigger and bigger. And over decades, he builds a phenomenal success. The name of this guitarist is Dave Mustaine. And the band he created was Megadeth, one of the most legendary bands. And Dave is one of the most legendary artists in this genre he helped pioneer of heavy metal hard rock. And he could not be a bigger icon. He is famous. He is rich. He has one of the two biggest bands in this genre that exploded by any standard. The guy is a phenomenal success. He has accomplished everything. I mean, any artist, any young musician's dream, and he considers himself a failure because the only other band in this entire genre that's bigger than him is Metallica. Metallica is the band he was kicked out of on the verge of recording their first album. The band he wanted to see him rise far beyond them. The only band that he didn't surpass by a massive quantity was Metallica. And that is the only band against which he compared himself and evaluated his success. Metallica has sold over 125 million albums while Megadeth has sold over 38 million. But no other band comes even close in this genre to 38 million. And by any standard, anywhere in music, he is a remarkably accomplished success. Yet he considers himself a failure because the only metric he uses, the only point of comparison against which he judges himself is the one band that's bigger than him in this genre. The only band in this genre that went on to become a mainstream phenomenon. 
And by defining his success by this one metric, he doomed himself. Even though that motivation fueled this success, who knows if he would have reached these heights if he weren't comparing himself against that, yet he feels empty and he feels like a failure. In a very revealing interview in 2003, he shares the vulnerability. I mean, it's really remarkable how open he is about it, how that is the metric by which he is evaluating himself and the bitterness and the disappointment that lingered to that point decades later was such a deep-rooted driving force in his life. The sadness, the anger, the resentment is all still there, despite just the astonishing heights he reached. And in that is an incredible lesson to all of us. It's not only about achieving our goals and our dreams, it's about having metrics that make sense. I mean, there is no logical way that this person, Dave Mustaine, could consider himself a failure. This just makes no sense at all by any rational standard. But in our own minds, we lock onto things. We obsess over one little thing and we define ourselves against that one little thing. And we sabotage our own ability to succeed in life and to be a success because of the way we frame it. Our minds are storytelling machines that paint the world in a very subjective way, a way that nobody else would find reasonable, but we take as merely a matter of fact because it's so entrenched in our beliefs. We don't even think it's a belief, we think it's a reality. By latching on so tightly to this framing, we can, if we have the wrong framing, doom ourselves to failure no matter what we do, no matter how successful we are. It's essential that we have a framing that's rational. Now, hopefully, as well, over life, as we grow, as we learn, we can reframe. We can find new metrics. We can find new points of reference. You can't lock onto a point of reference when you're 20 years old and hold that into your 30s and 40s and 50s. It makes no sense. But sometimes you get so emotionally attached to something, it just takes over. You have to learn to recognize those things and you have to learn to break them. Easier said than done but it is completely doable. And the first step is recognizing that you're doing this. So an essential aspect of being successful in life is finding objectives that make sense and measuring your progress toward them in a way that's driven by what you have influence over, by your ability to drive it and to change it, not by external factors that you have no control over. Dave Mustaine had immense influence over what he did and the success of his band, but he had no control or influence over what happened with Metallica. If he were measuring himself against his own success, against metrics per that were personal to him, or even adjusting or having a broad spectrum of multiple reference points, he could have more easily seen what a success he had become, which is something that was obvious to everybody around him. So there's a lot for us to learn about our own lives. Not all of us are in heavy metal rock bands, but all of us are judging our progress in life versus other external reference points. And you need to pick your reference points carefully. I've made this mistake so many times myself. I do it over and over again, even when I know it's a thing. So you have to catch yourself and you have to find a framing on what success means to you that makes sense and that helps you achieve it. The right framing should drive you, not beat you down. So I hope that's helpful. I found this to be an incredibly valuable and insightful story. I reflect on it all the time. Let me know in the comments below if these kinds of revealing stories are of interest and value to you and we can look at more of them in future videos. If this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. And please hit like if you found this video valuable. Leave thoughts or questions below or join us in the Notion Life Design course to explore these topics more extensively. That's all at notionlifedesign.com. I also write the Life Design newsletter on increasing human capability I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. The newsletter link is also below in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.